grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Good afternoon and welcome to our Hour at the Cross, our Good Friday Reflections. Uh, in a minute I'm going to do uh, an opening prayer and then the service will just flow with a short Bible reading, uh, a picture to reflect on with some quiet, then a song will come on and then we'll go through the whole service like that and there'll be a short talk, uh, reflections on one of my favourite paintings uh, towards the end. So it's just a quite a, a reflective, uh, thoughtful uh, service. So I suggest that you find yourself sitting somewhere comfortably. If you like uh, to hold things uh, to reflect on, maybe a bit of nail or a bit of cloth or a bit of rope, uh, they're all part of uh, this uh, reflection and you can hold on to them. If you want to light a candle, you might want to do that. Uh, and then uh, it'd be helpful for you to, to reflect on the collect for today. Eternal God, in the cross of Jesus, we see the cost of our sin and the depth of your love. In humble hope and fear, may we place at his feet all that we have and all that we are through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Then we have our first Bible reading. When he had finished praying, Jesus left his disciples and crossed the Kidron Valley. On the other side, there was an olive grove and he and his disciples went into it. Now Judas, who betrayed him, knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas came to the grove, guiding a detachment of soldiers and some other officials from the chief priests and Pharisees. They were carrying torches, lanterns and weapons. Jesus, knowing all that was going on, to, going to happen to him, went out and asked them, Who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. I am he, Jesus said. And Judas, the traitor, was standing there with them. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, Who is it you want? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. I told you that I am he, Jesus answered. If you are looking for me, then let these men go. This happened so that the words he had spoken would be fulfilled. I have not lost one of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus commanded Peter, put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup the father has given me? Then the detachment of soldiers with its commander and the Jewish officials arrested Jesus. They bound him and brought him first to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it would be good if one man died for the people.
Heavenly Father, we remember today the pain and suffering of the cross and all that Jesus was willing to endure so that we could be set free. He paid the price, such a great sacrifice, to offer us the gift of eternal life. Amen.
Simon Peter and another disciple were following Jesus because this disciple, this disciple was known to the high priest. He went with Jesus into the high priest's courtyard, but Peter had to wait outside at the door. The other disciple who was known to the high priest came back, spoke to the girl on duty there and brought Peter in. You are not one of his disciples, are you? The girl at the door asked Peter. He replied, I am not. It was cold and the servants and the officials stood around the fire they had, been, uh, they had made to keep warm. Peter also was standing with them, warming himself. Meanwhile, the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. I have spoken openly to the world, Jesus replied. I always taught in synagogues or at the temple where all the Jews come together. I said nothing in secret. Why question me? Ask those who heard me. Surely they know what I said. When Jesus said this, one of the officials nearby struck him in the face. Is this the way you answer the high priest? He demanded. If I said something wrong, Jesus replied, testify as to what is wrong. But if I spoke the truth, why did you strike me? Then Annas sent him, still bound, to Caiaphas, the high priest. As Simon Peter stood warming himself, he was asked, You are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it, saying, I am not. One of the high priest's servants, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, challenged him. Didn't I see you with him in the olive grove? Again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, the rooster began to crow. Jesus, help us to never take for granted your huge gift of love on our behalf. Help us to remember the cost of the cross. Forgive us for being too busy or distracted to fully recognise what you have freely given. Amen.
Then the Jews led Jesus from Caiaphas to the palace of the Roman governor. By now it was early morning and to avoid ceremonial uncleanliness, the Jews did not enter the palace. They wanted to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and asked, what charges are you bringing against this man? If he were not a criminal, they replied, we would have not have handed him over to you. Pilate said, take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. But we have no right to execute anyone, the Jews objected. This happened so that the words Jesus had spoken indicated the kind of death he was going to die would be fulfilled. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus and asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea? Jesus asked. Or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew? Pilate replied. It was your people and your chief priests who handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, you are right in saying that I am a king. In fact, for this reason I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What is truth? Pilate asked. With this he went out again to the Jews and said, I find no basis for a charge against him. But it is your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at the time of the Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? They shouted back, no, not him. Give us Barabbas. Now Barabbas had been taking part in a rebellion. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and again, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck him in the face. Once more, Pilate came out and said to the Jews, Look, I'm bringing him out to you and to let you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here is the man. As soon as the chief priests and the officials saw him, they shouted, Crucify! Crucify! But Pilate answered, You take him and crucify him. As for me, I find no basis for a charge against him. The Jews insisted, We have a law, and according to that law, he must die, because he claimed to be the Son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid, and he went back inside the palace. Where do you come from? He asked Jesus, but Jesus gave him no answer. Do you refuse to speak to me? Pilate said to him. Do you realise I have power either to free you or to crucify you? Jesus answered, you would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to set Jesus free, but the Jews kept shouting, If you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard this, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judge's seat at a place known as the Stone Pavement, which in Aramaic is Gabbatha. It was the day of preparation of Passover week about the sixth hour. Here is your king, Pilate said to the Jews. They shouted, take him away, take him away, crucify him. Shall I crucify your king, Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priest answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified.
Thank you, Lord, that by your wounds we are healed. Thank you that because of your huge sacrifice we can live free. Thank you that sin and death have been conquered and that your power is everlasting. Amen. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus, carrying his own cross. He went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. Here they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each side, and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read the sign for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin and Greek. The chief priests of the Jews protested to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but that this man claimed to be the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes dividing them into four shares, one for each of them. With the undergarment remaining, the garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide by lot who will get it. This happened 
that the scripture might be fulfilled, which said, they divided my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. So this is what the soldiers did. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there, and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Dear woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Later, knowing that all was now completed, and so that the scriptures would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it. They put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant and lifted it to Jesus's lips. When he had received a drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Now it was the day of preparation and the next day was to be a special Sabbath. Because the Jews did not want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath, they asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. The soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus and then those of the other. But when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his leg. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. The man who saw it has given testimony and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth and he testifies so that you also may believe. These things happen so that the scriptures would be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And as another scripture says, they will look on the one they have pierced. Later, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now, Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly because he, were, he feared the Jews. When Pilate's permission, with Pilate's permission, he came and took the body away. It was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who had earlier had visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds. Taking Jesus' body, the two men wrapped it. Father, thank you that we can say with great hope, it is finished, for we know what is still to come. Death has lost its sting. We praise you for making all things new. Amen.
this is one of my favorite paintings i have it hanging up on my hallway just a small print of it and just for a moment i want to reflect on on, on this uh, painting as we think about good friday first of all i want to note the darkness this is not a trial taking place in the 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 light of a day in front of crowds of fair crowds this is done in secret at night in the darkness the only people around jesus in this picture are trying to catch him out the people who are aiming to find some kind of charge that they can charge him with i wonder how much of that resonates with us the things that are done in the darkness in secret that people don't know about the things that we we should know better about a better way of living our life done in darkness in secret today is a day where we can bring them just i guess like every other day but more importantly today that we can bring them to jesus to that cross and can remember jesus dying on that cross for those things that only we know about the things that we do in secret things the darkness of our lives and then i reflect also about the loneliness of it jesus on his own facing all of that for us for all of uh, the world's sins and i think about the times where i've struggled to stand firm to be the one who stood up against all around me to stand up for my lord and my savior and then just look at the intensity on jesus's face as he stares at the high priest listening to his questions and he says this the high priest said to him i charge you under oath by the living god tell us if you are the christ the son of god yes it is as you say jesus replied that's what we're remembering today that jesus even in this rig trial even though he knew what was going on still had to suffer for us nailed to a cross because he is the christ and the son of god came to take away the sins of the world all who call on his name will be saved let us remember all that jesus has done all that jesus has achieved on that cross for us and for our salvation today and always When I survey the wondrous cross on which the to his 